Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. Today we're bringing you a Stash with Stephanie video, which means we've got a brand new back quarter friendly pattern that you can follow along with at home, whether you're a member of the club or not. And if you're not a member and you don't have any interest in making this pattern, I still recommend that you watch the video because it's all about half square triangles. So if that's something you've struggled with, with having your points not end up exactly where you want them to be, we're gonna cover that in depth today. And so that way you will never have a point not end up where it's not supposed to again, and you can have really stunning results at home with not a lot of effort. But before we get into that, we're gonna talk a little bit about Stash with Stephanie, and we're gonna talk a little bit about this month's fabric. So Stash with Stephanie is a subscription club that we run here at Quilt Addicts Anonymous. We send you 10 fat quarters for $29.99 a month, plus shipping, a free pattern that's inspired by the fabrics, and then also you get access to our pattern library of patterns that have been developed for Stash with Stephanie. It, exclusive discounts and first dibs on getting additional fabric so you can turn your bundle into a whole quilt if you want. If not, you can just keep it in your stash for some later project. And you also get exclusive discounts on my book, Fat Quarter Workshop, which has a bunch more Fat Quarter friendly patterns in it. So we created this club to solve the two biggest problems that quilters have. The first one is not knowing how to put fabrics together. We had a brick and mortar shop for a long time and I spent a lot of time helping people just find fabrics that look good together. That's even harder when you're shopping online because let's face it, most local quilt shops either don't carry modern fabrics at all or if they do, they have one shelf and maybe you can find some cape and tulle in it and that's about it. But for us, that's all we stock. And I know that sometimes it can be hard to know what looks good when you're ordering from a screen. And this bundle that we send you is completely matched. It looks beautiful together. And it is gonna look great in whatever project you use all those fabrics together in. Now the second problem is figuring out what on earth are we gonna do with this fabric? I love it and I think it's beautiful, but what should it become when it grows up? And that's where the pattern comes in. Every month I take a look at the fabric and I take a look at its qualities, the size of the motif, motifs and and just the general inspiration from it. And I think, how will this best work as a quilt? And I try to come up with something that really does justice to the fabric and is designed specifically for that. This month's pattern, for example, we have two main colorways that we'll take a little bit closer look at in a second. And so in our blocks, we're gonna be utilizing that and we're gonna be doing a nice fade because it fades very nicely from dark to light on both sides of the colorway. And then we're gonna be using these light blocks as a little square. So we're gonna have some really cool effects that we're gonna create with this month's block, but we're gonna be able to do it because it's been specifically designed for this fabric. Now that doesn't mean you can't do something else with your stash and do that if you're not a member of the club, but if you are a member of the club, we've got something that is gonna work great with this fabric for you. You get it as part of your subscription and you also get first dibs on getting additional fabric because you usually need a few more fat quarters. And then we also send you your background and binding if you wanna purchase is what's called a finishing kit. So that way you can turn your bundle into a full quilt. All right, so that is enough about Stash with Stephanie. You can sign up over at shop.quiltatisnamas.com. So this month's fabric is Forage by Sarah Gordon for Figo. Figo, we use them a lot for our Stash with Stephanie. Um, if you haven't heard of them, you probably have heard of Northcott. That's their parent company. And it's printed on the same base cotton. So it's a very silky feeling, a very substantive weight of the substrate, which is the material that it's printed on. Each manufacturer has their own uh, one that they use and prefer, and Northcott's is one of my favorites. Now, as you can see, we've got two main colorways, and what we also did here is we have added in a couple of their basics um, as well, because Figo's got a couple of basics. That way we could fill it out and really make that work. So if you are building your stash, that is a good thing to know, is that sometimes you might not have the exact amount that you need to do what you want. But if you can find something that's usually just one or two, sometimes three different colors um, that is going to work with your fabrics, then you can fill that out and make that work. 
All right, so forage has all the things that you would forage if you were out in the woods and you needed to find something to eat. So we'll start over here. We've got some nice fruit. We can't figure out what fruit this is. I'll be chatting with the designer next week and I will ask then. Uh, but there definitely is a fruit here and because it's not true to its actual color, we haven't, we haven't figured that out yet. But it is really cute, it's really pretty. And then we have these beautiful flowers to go with it. This one is just the flowers. This one's one of my favorites. Um, it has what looks like some mushrooms in some places. Um, and then there's a couple of tiny little butterflies, uh, but lots of tiny little flowers there. And speaking of tiny flowers, we have some more here. Here's that big fruit one, and it's just kind of a fun print. It's not a lot of colors to it, and so it really just sort of acts as like a supporting player to some of the others. This is one of those basics that I was telling you about that's gonna help finish out our colorway to create the fade in the pattern. We've got some more wildflowers, a little bit different scale. And this one was also from their Lucky Charms basics, but I thought it worked with the little acorn since we were dealing with a forest scene. And then we have some more little flowers. This one, here's my favorite print again. This one to me looks like a mushroom, uh, these little bits here. I'm not a fan of eating mushrooms, but they look cool. And of course, bugs forage. So we do have a couple of bugs. Um, they are used small. So if you're not a fan of bugs, one, you could just leave them out of your quilt and that would be okay. Um, but this would also make a really great ice spy quilt. Uh, so if you are looking for fabrics for that, make sure you check out our remnant section or just grab a half yard of this. Then we have our fruit again, uh, this time in a yellow colorway, some more bugs, and then our really fun print again here. So if you're a member, you've received 10 of these 15 fat quarters, and then you get exclusive dibs on getting an additional five, so whichever five you didn't get, plus background fabric, so that way you can create the quilt as we've made it, and you are gonna be able to have some fun with this. Now, if you're not a subscriber, we do have full kits available, or you can just get yarded uh, whichever you prefer. So when we create this pattern, we're gonna have a gradated look to it. So you're gonna wanna number your fabrics from one to five based on its color value. So your lighter color values are gonna be your ones and your darkest ones are gonna be your fives. So I'm gonna show you how to make a half square triangle putting two together that are from the prints. Now you're gonna have different combinations that you're going to need to make from each color value and background fabrics and sometimes with each other like in this case your pattern tells you all of that and it's spread out for the different sizes so make sure you grab that over at shop.quiltanonymous.com it's called tropical grove uh, the reason why i picked that name is this is kind of like a pineapple pattern but definitely a way easier version of it so a pineapple pattern is usually a paper piece and it's really complicated and you get a lot of colors going out into the center so what we did here is we made some that kind of has that feel. It doesn't have the same uh, white space on the sides, but we are gonna be going out in that gradated look with longer and longer strips. And then we're gonna have everything coming together at the center, but we're gonna be able to do it in a much easier way with half square triangles. So if that's kind of on your list, this is not the pineapple block, it definitely is not, but it kind of is a pineapple-esque block uh, in a, that we're able to achieve a similar look. Uh, but with a whole lot less effort. All right, so I'm gonna flip this over. I've already drawn a line, but I'm gonna do it again so that you can hopefully see it a little better on camera. What I wanna do is I wanna line my ruler up from point to point, and I like to use my friction gel pen for this. I'm going over it quite a bit. One stroke is just fine for you at home. I just wanna make sure you can see it on the camera. And I'm drawing right into this corner and right into this corner. And the reason why you want to go right into the corner instead of maybe just a little bit to the side because you're feeling a little lazy and you got a little off is when I've seen people do this in person, people often think I'm just going to correct and go to straight to the corner. And most people don't. Most people end up following the line as they're sewing because it's easier. And then you end up with half square triangles that are a little wonky. The points don't go all the way out to where they're supposed to. So that's important. You wanna make sure that you do that. So next we're gonna layer these right sides together and you wanna make sure that you're matching up your top points. Now I don't pin this because I've done 
probably thousands of these, maybe tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands, hard to say, it's a lot. But if you were going to pin, the point where you would want to pin would be across the top where your points are because this, two points, the top and the bottom, are the most important to get in place. Um, I've seen people pin this where they're pinning like on the sides here, and that allows for a lot of wiggle room here and here. But you wanna make sure that you've got these two points right on top of each other, because if they're not, if that shifts, then you're gonna have a really hard time getting a block that is the correct size and where your points are going all the way to the edges. So make sure if you're gonna pin, you're pinning across where you're gonna be sewing, which is is what we're doing next. So I've got my presser foot off my machine here so that way we can show this to you a little easier. What we're gonna do is normally when we sew, we sew with the presser foot, even with the edge of our fabric here, and we have it set up to a quarter inch seam. Now, when we sew, we're gonna be doing two at a time triangles, which I find to be much more accurate and easier than if we were to cut across here and then sew together. The reason is, is whenever you're sewing on the bias, there's a lot of stretch there. You can see that really moving. So if you are not careful, then you can stretch that seam out as you're sewing if it's not still attached to your fabric. So you wanna make sure that what we're gonna do is we're just going to stitch all the way down one side, treating this drawn line as if it were the edge of our fabric and lining up the edge of our press fit with it. And then when we're all done, we're gonna flip it around and we're gonna stitch down the other side. And I like to use a scant quarter inch seam for this. That way I've got just a teeny little bit wiggle room and a scant quarter inch seam is basically a quarter inch seam with your needle moved one needle width to the right in order to be able to make that happen. The other thing I recommend is using a foot like this one that does not have a guide. Um, those little flanges on the side tend to get in the way and are kind of hard to use um, when you're going over fabric like this. So if you have a foot like this and the ability to set a quarter inch seam, that would be the one I recommend for this project. All right, so I've got my presser foot lined up with that line. And now I'm just gonna start sewing down. You can go ahead and remove the pin if you did choose to pin that. And I'm just gonna sew that scant quarter inch seam. Now I am just letting the feed dogs in my machine take this through. I'm not pushing it through. I'm not doing anything like that because I don't want to stretch out that bias. Now I'm getting kind of toward the end. I'm going to remove that second pin. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my finger right here. And that's going to allow me to maintain that scant quarter and seam all the way down. If I were to just kind of let it do whatever at that point, then I might get like a variation. And then you end up with these like smiley or frowny faces at the edge of your triangles. And it's not a straight seam. So it just doesn't work out quite right. All right, so now I'm going to, what you would do is you would just feed a whole bunch of these through your machine all at once. And then when you're all through the end, you can flip it around and now we're gonna sew down the other side. All right, so before we go any further, I'm gonna measure the seam. What I'll do is I'll mark where the seam is with the pen so you can see it really clearly. And now I'm gonna measure. And here you can see my dotted line is my half inch. And so my seam allowance is just a hair underneath where that half inch line is, which is perfect. That's exactly what you want from a skin quarter inch seam. You want it to be somewhere in between your half inch and your three eighths inch marking on your ruler. Anything smaller than that, and you're gonna have a seam allowance that is unstable and might pop open during use or even just when you're quilting it if you have to put it on a long arm frame and have that tension. So as long as that is not nice and straight and you've got that good consistent uh, width all the way down, then you are gonna be fine. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and cut down this line. Now, when you cut, it's not super important that you're exactly on the line, but you don't wanna be too far to either side either because if you, again, if you get your seam too skinny, then you're gonna have problems when you put it together. So about a quarter inch is what you're aiming for. All right, now it's time to press this. Now, whenever I do any triangles, really any seam, but especially when I'm working with triangles, I like to press my seams open. To do that, I take the tip of my iron and I put it straight down that center seam and then I keep a couple of fingers ahead. So that way I can make sure that that is kind of pressed open a little bit. Once I've got that done, I wanna make sure I've got a nice straight seam. If you see a little wiggle in there, it means you got a pleat somewhere and you're gonna to have to deal with that. So then once I'm good with that, I flip it over and I press it again from the right side. 
What this does is it really flattens everything out really nicely and allows for you to have really great joins when we get to the next step of actually putting our triangles together. And I did not start doing this until I started quilting my own quilts. And it also allows for a lot more possibilities with that portion. And I know this is the point where the quilt please get their undies in a bunch and say, you can't do that, the seam isn't strong. Well, the seam is, is plenty strong. This is how garment sewers do it. And obviously garments have to take on a lot of wear and tear, much more than a quilt does. And also, you can stitch in the ditch in a modified way. We have a video on this that we just posted, but essentially you're gonna stitch right next to the ditch instead of straight down it, which is essentially what you do anyway when you are pressing the seams to the side. You're still gonna stitch on one side of that seam allowance. And so this is just, it, it just works so much better in terms of your results for what you can get for your piecing. And then also it really opens up a lot of doors because you don't have that bulk to try to quilt through as well. All right, so now we've got two half square triangles for the price of one and nothing got stretched all out of place. Everything is nice and square, but we still have one very important step before we can start sewing these into quilt block and that's trimming them to size. So the very first half square triangle quilt I ever made, I didn't trim anything. And I thought this is a stupid step. Why is anyone gonna do it? And I regretted every minute of it of making that decision when I started sewing things together because things just don't fit together quite right. You've got all these dog ears that add extra bulk. And as you can see, this is actually, it's supposed to be three and a half inches. It is three and uh, we've got almost a full eighth of an inch extra on here. And that's gonna be a problem when you're trying to get things to fit exactly. We've got a square in here too. So we wanna make sure that we are uh, the same amount. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your six and a half inch ruler in this case, you can use bigger ones if you've got bigger ones, um, bigger triangles, but you're going to line that 45 degree line up along that seam line. That is the most important thing to get right because if we have it off, it's like see now we're going off a little bit here. This point when we trim it down is never going to be in the corner and so we're never going to be able to get those points to match exactly. So this is incredibly important that we get that 45 degree line lined up with our seam first. From there, I'm making sure obviously that I've got some hanging past the ruler, so I have something to trim off. And then also that I have some hanging past the three and a half inch line on either side of here. These instructions work for any size half square triangle by the way that you're working. You just need to make sure you've got a little bit hanging beyond that. So we're doing good here. We're gonna be able to trim this to size. Now with my whole palm down on the ruler, I find it slips a lot less when you do that. And my pinky to the side for some stability. And I'm actually gonna stand up for this. Uh, when I was very pregnant, I trimmed a whole bunch sitting down and the results were not as good. Uh, if you can get to a countertop surface, that's ideal. All right, so I'm gonna pull this away and we're good to go here. Also, if you find that the fabric is kind of pushing up on you when you get to the top here, when you're making your trim, uh, that usually means it's time to change your rotary cutter blade and it's not sharp enough to do what you want it to do and that's why you're getting it off. But we can see here that right now our seam is going straight out to that corner, which is exactly what we want. It's gonna make it a lot easier to get perfect joins later. All right, so I'm gonna give this a 180 degree flip. Now the edges that I cut are on my left and my bottom. So what I'm gonna do now Next is I'm going to line it up again. So again, first thing I'm lining up 45 degree line going through that seam allowance, especially paying attention to up here. And now since we've already trimmed this side, we're gonna have that exactly at three and a half for this one. Put my whole palm down, pinky to the side. Stand up so I can really see what I'm doing. So we had a little bit of slippage there. That means it's time to change this ruler we're cutting stash with Stephanie with it, or this rotary blade. All right, so now we have it. It looks fantastic. We have got the fabric going straight out to both points. It's trimmed to size. You can see we did not take that much off, but I'm gonna go ahead and line it up side by side with the other one. And you can see there is, and we'll put it this way, there is a marked difference in size. This one is smaller, it is neat. We don't have all that extra bulk from the uh, dog ears, which can also cause problems when it 
Um, it's time to get any nice flat quilt blocks. So I know this takes a long time to do this and you don't have to do it all at once. You can do it in segments, um, but it is absolutely not a step to be skipped when you are doing half square triangles. You will love the results so much better if you take the time to do this step. All right, so I've got all my blocks laid out. You can see how we're doing this fade. We've got our lightest color going out to our darkest color, and then we'll have different ones that are going from light to dark. And, and it's gonna be a really cool effect when it's all together. It does take some planning, uh, but mostly if you just label your uh, fabrics from the color value, the value is the light or darkness that is in it. So this is gonna be a light value. This will be a dark value. And if you label that, then it makes it a lot easier to sew everything together. Uh, one thing that you wanna pay attention to is maybe planning out each block individually as you're sewing your uh, half square triangles together. Because I totally messed up putting these together because in mine, I'm using two different fabrics for my color three value. This will make sense if you're paying attention to your pattern as you're listening to this. And so I ended up having to re-sew uh, these in a different uh, variation because I had put them together for the wrong block combination. So definitely I would recommend doing it by block when you're putting everything together when anything that has like a three combination. So anything that's a three, four or a three, two, um, I would sew everything else together, lay it out and then decide how many of these that you need and that'll make your life easier. So you don't have to do what I did. I do have enough fabric to be able to make it work, but um, you definitely don't want to have to redo things. That's not so fun. But anyway, so I've got everything nice and laid out. What I'm going to do here is start sewing things into rows. So at this point, we don't actually have any triangle points to match because they are all like our point is at the top here and at the bottom here. And that's the case across the whole block. So all you have to do here is sew it as though you were sewing a bunch of squares together. We're going to go ahead and flip over all of our units of our row one to the uh, column two there. And then we're gonna able to sew all these together and going back to a regular quarter inch seam. And then we'll do the same thing for the other section. And that way we're able to kind of just go through this pretty quickly and not have uh, a ton of time in between because we're able to do it very efficiently. If you wanted a pin, you could. All I do is I just line up my points uh, put them together and just start sewing. Then the chain piece, all you're gonna do is you're just going to grab your next one, get it lined up as well. And then you are gonna lift up your presser foot and slide it in and let the feed dogs take it to go straight through. Now, just like when we were doing half square triangles, I like to put my finger to the side here once I can't hold on anymore. And that helps keep a nice straight quarter inch stitch all the way down. All right, so I've got my columns all laid back out. I highly recommend you always put it back into place to make sure that everything looks the way it should. You should have nice straight lines going across that are created by your half square triangles. If it looks weird, then something isn't going correctly and you need to figure out what it is before you sew anymore. All right, so you could press now. What I'd like to do is just press it all at once at the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip my guys right sides together again. Again, we just need to make sure we're matching up our corners because we don't have any points to match yet. All right, now I'm just gonna stitch quarter and seam, chain piecing as I go to complete my rows. All right, so all the rows are together. Again, now is a really great time to make sure that you've got those diagonal rows going. You should be able to see them even though they're not pressed. If something looks weird, you better figure it out before you move any further. All right, so now I'm gonna start pressing all these seams open. Again, I like to press it open because it gets everything really flat and makes it really great to get some fabulous joins coming up next, which is the secret to half square triangles where you never ever lose a point and everything looks where it's supposed to be. So just like when we were pressing the half square triangles, I'm gonna start just 
just by opening up that seam with my fingertips and then put the center of my iron down. Now what's different is you have a bunch of other seams going on in here too. So you're going to make sure you're lifting and pressing that iron down so you don't accidentally press any of these going the wrong direction. All right, so I'm gonna open up this seam next and lift and press my way across, taking special care when I get to that one there. You have to take more and more care the bigger your block gets because there's just more and more seams to watch out for. All right, now if you've watched any of my videos, you know I love my spray mister. I like to use this instead of water in, in my iron because every iron I've ever put water in eventually spits and makes your fabric gross. So I just like to keep it out of there. So instead of using steam, what I do is I put a little bit in the spray mister. It just turns it into an aerosol mist. So you can just give it a spritz on your fabric. You don't get those weird water droplets that kind of discolor it. And then you can just kind of go over it from there and get a super super, super flat seam. So I like to do that whenever I'm at the row section, which I am at now. And we can see that these are just super, super flat. They look great. Um, if you notice, all of these points are about a quarter inch away from the edge. That's supposed to be the case. Um, it's going to be in the seam allowance. Now this one's up a little bit higher than this one. Don't worry about that. I'm gonna show you how to work around that. Now for the bottom corner, that one should still be going, but here you can see that we're ending about a quarter inch away. That's supposed to be how it looks. All right, I'm gonna press the rest of these and we're gonna cover how to pin these together so we don't lose any points. All right guys, so here's where pretty much everything can go wrong if you don't, if you're having trouble with your half square triangles. So if you've done everything correctly to this point, you have trimmed your triangles to size, you made sure that your points are going right out to the point, you sewed everything together really well, you got about a half or a quarter inch from the tip of the point to the edge, you can still really screw it up at this point, but I'm gonna show you how to avoid that with a really simple two penny method that makes all the difference. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna flip this one Let's do this one because it'll be easier to see because it's got really white bits. So we're going to zoom in for this section. All right, so when we look at this, we can see that there is a teeny little triangle that's formed where the tip of that triangle meets the seam allowance. Now, what I want to do is I want to put a pin in right at the top of where that triangle is just through the first line. And I'm going straight through the middle of that seam allowance like that. Now, if I had pressed my seams to the side, I may or may not be able to see this um, depending on how everything is pressed, but I can see it really clearly here. So I've got it going straight up and down. Now I'm gonna find the exact same point here. We can see where that little tip is about a quarter inch away. So I'm gonna put my pin in right about there. And again, that's going straight through that seam allowance. Now, um, I, I think you can tell, but we've got a teeny tiny, like less than an eighth of an inch where my seam allowances are not matching up and that's okay. No one's gonna see the inside of your quilt to know that that wasn't perfectly on, that your little corners didn't match up, but they will be able to tell if your points aren't on, especially on a block like this. So while pinching this, I've got to pinch with my thumb and forefinger so that needle is going straight up and down and I'm going to now pin right in that seam allowance and that way I can pin horizontally to hold that together and once I'm done with that then I can remove what's going on so what I'm going to do here is when I sew I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stitch down and then I'm going to stop with my needle down in the first half of the seam allowance and then I'm going to stitch just one needle width to the right of where this point is right here and by stitching just one needle width to the right of it that means you won't cut off your point and I'm not worried that this is off a little bit. I'm gonna stitch a quarter inch seam if I have to come in a little bit and then chalk out, that's fine. Um, you will not notice that from the outside when your quilt is all said and done, but you will notice that those points are off. So I'd rather have the inside look a little, little off than have the outside look off because everybody's gonna know about that. All right, so I'm gonna keep going down the edge. You can see it one more time. Again, I'm gonna put that pin in right at the point right above it, right smack down the middle of the seam allowance. This one is a little harder to tell because there's, you know, two prints coming together, but I'm gonna go right above. Again, my seam allowances are not perfectly matching up. 
don't worry, this is called fudging it. Every quilter has got to know how to do it in order for it to look right on the outside because it's fabric. Fabric moves, fabric shifts. These were sewn on the bias. And, you know, it's not like we cut something and it stayed exactly that size. You know, things, things shift a little when we're dealing with fabric. All right, so that is now all pinned. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other two sets of rows, and then I'm ready to sew this together. All right, so I'm still stitching with just that standard quarter inch seam. What I like to do is kind of make sure that my seams are going in the correct direction underneath. Sometimes they can flip back on you um, and then you get one that you got to flip going the other way. All right, so I'm slowing down as I come to that seam allowance. I want to make sure that I'm one needle width to the right and I've stopped with my pin down here, or my needle down here, so it kind of acts like a pin. This is another reason why I do not like those um, presser feet that have a little flange out here. They're just not good for precision sewing. If all you're doing is sewing strips, that's great. But if I were to use one that had a flange right about here, that flange would be knocking into my pin and I'd have to remove it in order for it to go easily underneath and slide under there. So then you can't sew right up to the point of that corner, then remove your pin and be confident that everything hasn't shifted around on you and caused you to have a point that's not so great. All right, so we've got a moment of truth here. We're gonna take a peek at this and this is looking really good. I'm really happy with all these points have turned out. These really came right together and it's gonna look even better once I press those seams open and get that super flat so that the points are just as pristine as possible. There's a lot of lifting and pressing going on here. I also like to really take my fingers and really press down where the seam joints are that way you kind of do a little bit of the work before the iron comes to it. And you're not like going all around with the iron. You're not ironing a shirt or pants or anything. You are literally pressing. And so that's looking really good. It already looks good on this side. It's gonna look even better once I hit it with some of my spray mister. There's just water in here. You can put um, like your starch alternatives and stuff in it, um, but I just like to hit it with that, with a little bit of water. And this looks very, very good. All of these points are coming together really well. This one is off just a smidge, but not enough to bother me. Once that's quilted, you won't be able to tell at all. This one is also going together really well as well. So that is how you get really, really fantastic joins when you are doing half square triangles. It is the sewing that scant quarter inch seam and doing the two at a time so you don't get stretched on the bias. It is making sure that you are trimming them down to the correct size and paying attention to make sure that that seam line is on the 45 degree line of your ruler. And then when you pin them together, pressing those seams open and then making sure that you are doing that double pinning method so that way your corners are right on top of each other. Those points are right on top of each other. Even if the seam allowance is a little off, it's fine. No one's gonna see this side. People are gonna see this side and they'll know if, if these points are off. But this, people are gonna love it. They're gonna think you did a fantastic job. They're never gonna know that it was off just, just a smidgen on the inside. So don't pay so much attention to that. Pay attention to where your points are. Make sure they're right on top of each other. You'll have results like this every time. Now, if it is off just a smidge and you wanna fix it, what you wanna do is you don't have to rip the whole thing out. You can just rip off about maybe an inch to either side and then you can repin and then sew again and then go from there. If it if it's off a bunch of times in a row, you probably need to redo something. Something didn't go quite right for you at one of those steps previous to that. All right, I'm going to finish pressing my seams open and then we're going to take a look at this block finished as well as the other blocks that are in this quilt. It's all the same design. It's just a different way of featuring it and over two colorways. that, 
my quilty friends is how you get really beautiful joins so you can have Haskell triangles look like strips of fabric that are going across and it is not hard it takes some practice it takes a little getting used to but it is not hard and you can absolutely master those half square triangles and really create some beautiful beautiful sewing all right we're going to take a look at some of the other blocks in this because uh, we have two colorways and we have two fades and it's not hard you just have to pay attention a little bit when you're sewing and you'll be good to go all right so i am making the smallest size for that so my three value is split over two different fabrics um, so that's kind of your medium value fabric there but you can see that we have two fades going from dark to light and light to dark all pointing toward that square in the center it's gonna be a really cool effect when it's all together it's pineapple-esque it is definitely not a pineapple block but it is an easy way to make it work and by the way when you're sewing these guys together you want to use that same two pinning technique as well to make sure that all the points match up really well as you're joining your blocks as well so this is one colorway I'm going to show you the teal colorway next so here we have the teal colorway again dark to light and light to dark all pointing toward here all with some really great joints so that way it looks like one big strip going across but we know it's has wear triangles because we just made them and spent some time on them and they look fantastic all right so the pattern again is called tropical grove you can get it over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com if you're a stash with stephanie subscriber you get it for free um, if you join this month you can get the pattern for free but you'll want to grab a quilt kit uh, for it a full one because we have already sent out the bundles for this month and there are not any more those you had to have been subscribed last month in order to get that um, stash with stephanie great club to be in we've got about 650 members right now who love getting their bundles every month and their free patterns that have been inspired by the fabric and really make use of it you can see here like i really thought out okay how are we going to make use of this really fabulous fade that is evident in the fabric but then also have some really fun light prints that can work as a quarter kind of a center of a block so it really is fun and we've got the two colorways that are going to look really good together it's a lot of fun and most of the time there's multiple sizes that you can make so you can always make it bigger if you want and we solved the problem of one making sure that you're buying fabric that all coordinates together because we've done that work for you um, by bringing you a brand new modern line of quilting fabric and if you're having trouble finding it locally we got you covered that's always carry so we can get it to you if your local shop just has nothing or like one shelf and that's it um, and then also we give you an idea of what to do with it now you certainly don't have to do this um, we've seen people do completely different things with the bundles that we send out but it gives you a good starting point gives you some ideas and then you can do what you want from there Thanks so much for following along. You can make sure you sign up for Stash with Stephanie over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. If you sign up before the end of this month, you will get your first bundle around the, well, we'll ship it around the 20th of June. If you sign up after June 1, you will not get your bundle. We will not ship it until July 20th. It takes a lot of time for us to get all the bundles together because we've got to cut every single fat quarter. We have to fold and bundle and ship every single bundle. And also we get our fabric sometimes super late because of COVID and shipping delays. And it's just crazy right now, but we're doing the best we can. We have not missed a deadline. We make it work every single month. Our team is amazing. We get you your fabrics on time and get you your patterns and it has been a lot of fun all right thanks for following along we're going to have more videos this week we've got a video on how i'm going to quilt this i'm going to do some ruler work in here and then i also am going to be chatting with the designer as well to get her inspirations uh, behind this and learn more about her so you can get to know her better thanks so much and until next time happy quilting fun little trick a really easy way to get these little bits out of your way just take your ruler scooch into the side and then you can have a nice little pile that you can take a photo of and share on instagram because it's super pretty when they're all together it's it's just it's fun